What is going on, everybody? It has been a minute since we've done Nerd, Babe, Nerd Made by Faith, and I, I really want to just kind of jump in and um, and say that I am sorry that I have been gone for so long. Um, but here we are. We're, we're back. Uh, Behind the Line is now done. I'm currently editing the video that was done, that, and that's kind of been a challenge lately on top of some other music projects that are happening and life in general. But I felt like I'm currently in uh, both a worship leadership class and a pastor's university right now. Um, and uh, I'm learning a lot. Learning about how to lead worship, learning a lot about just preaching in general. And so I kind of want to apply that here um, the best way that I can. And what I really want to do is focus the next couple of podcasts on is the power of the spirit um our purpose with the spirit and our calling with the spirit and you know we've talked about this before i believe that purpose and calling are two a little bit two different things um but we're going to pull from something we haven't pulled from yet um we've talked a lot about power rangers we've talked a lot about batman and nightwing and whatnot but what i want to pull from today is my hero academia and there's a certain reason for that but i, I want us to get to the root verse and then we're going to see how that applies to it. So uh, we're going to look at Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. This is the NLT version. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. Can't read. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. This is a pretty basic, pretty standard verse that a lot of people quote. Um, Andy Minio, there's a song called Let There Be Light. Um, and he, uh, he talks about it in that. Uh, and that's... That's a, uh, you know, it's not bad. Um, it's not bad at all to transform. But um, if you have seen My Hero Academia, which I hope you have if you're on this channel, um, you know Izuku Midoriya goes through transformation. He is a very faithful, smart, caring, compassionate person. Um, but the only thing he is missing is he does not have a quirk. He does not have... Uh, what everybody else in the world has. He's the 1% that does not have um, any kind of special ability. But it's been his dream his whole life to have the ability to save people. That's what he wants. And on a very, very fate, fate-filled encounter, um, he ends up meeting his hero, All Might. And... after seeing the sacrifice that that Deku gives to save Bakugo his friend slash bully All Might decides to pass on his power to to Deku and in doing this you know the, the, the action of doing it is he has to eat his hair it's weird uh, but it's like a piece of his DNA passes it down So, it's in a way biblical. I'm not done yet, but uh, it's, a, it's in a way biblical. And, and the point of that is we are, when we give our lives to Christ, when we accept that we are sinners and we need we need him and that he died on the cross for us and we want to uh you know wash away the past and wash away who we are and yeah, we're not perfect we're not perfect um but he passes us not his hair of course but he passes us the spirit yeah the holy spirit is what is here the holy spirit is is the tangible um, 
the tangible spirit of the Lord. So as the show progresses, um, Izuku has to, to ch- you know, he has to uh, train, you know, because now his body is developing. So he has to train, he has to train so he can get into the school and to become a hero. And, um, and he trains and he trains, he, but he doesn't know how to use his power to a full, to the full potential. So he only can, you know, use his finger and it breaks his finger, breaks his arms. His, his body is falling apart because he doesn't know how to use this gift he's been given. And he knows everything about every other hero in the world. So he tries to manipulate you. Try to, well, how do they do this? Da, 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 da. And he learns a, a kicking, you know, method from Gran Torino, who is this older, who's one of All Might's, you know, older friends, uh, older mentors. And when you think about that, it helps for a little bit that he's using his legs for his powers. Uh, but as the show progresses, he's able to get more and more and more advanced. But um, I think about the fact that he knows all this knowledge of all these other people and that he tries to use that to tame and control one for all. But then we look at Romans. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And throughout, throughout my hero... Deku has to change his mentality. There's a huge arc that just happened in the anime. It happened a while ago in the manga, but uh, he had to overcome the fact that he could not do it by himself. There was a big threat happening, and uh, with Shigaraki, who's the main villain, uh, who was after after him, and so he was like, "Well, I'm gonna have to do this by myself to save everybody else, keep all my friends to the side." Uh, and it was killing him. It was actively killing him because he thought he had to be this hero, this all might figure, because he was caring one for all. But he had to come to realize that that's he's not all might. He's not the predecessors of. Or the he, he's not the ancestors of the power of of one for all, and there there I think there were seven before him. You know, it it really makes you sit there and think, you know, generational as well. You know, I'm, I'm taking this scripture and I'm going a little different direction, but if, if you really think about it, don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of those who came before you either. I love my father. My dad is is one of one of my supporters in life. He's not perfect. He's not perfect, um, but he did a lot of bad things when I was growing up. He did a lot of bad things, um, and I've learned not to follow down that path. You know, my path in life is far different from my father's. There are some things where I look in the mirror and I'm like. You're kind of becoming him in some some ways, and I and I, I try to stop that the best I can. Um, love my dad; he's a good person, but at one point in time, he wasn't. Um, he wasn't a good husband. He wasn't. He, at times, wasn't a good dad. Um, he made choices. He let he let things of the world consume him, and and that's stuff that I think a lot of us a lot of us deal with. Um, but because of the spirit that God has put in me, I'm able to, you know, move past that just a little bit, just a little bit. Hold on real quick. Sorry, I want that music going still. I, li- I like that music going in the background. Um, But, you know, I did not let myself become that. Even my mom. My mom was a workaholic. I myself am not a workaholic. Um, I would rather work on the things that I know are going to make a difference than, you know, a job. But, uh, you know, we all have to work. You know, we all have to work. And I'm at this point right now where God is having me serve in all these different directions. And I'm like, but God, I got to work. So I keep putting these applications, praying about it. God is like, no, 
you're not going there. I need you here. And so that's been a struggle lately too. Um, but let God transform you into a person by changing the way you think. And, and that's, that's one thing I've got issues with my family. I think completely different than the rest of them. I am the one who thinks so logically on things, but at the same time, I think so spiritually that sometimes the logic doesn't make sense. Um, my oldest sister is very emotionally driven. My my middle sister is very, very much a, uh, a numb, I keep to myself kind of person. Um, and then me, I'm the one who is logic but spiritually driven. My mom is very emotional but tries to keep logic. And my dad, uh, my dad is my dad. <laughs> my dad is probably the, the chillest out of everybody. Um, and even my wife, my wife is used to be very emotionally driven she still is to a point but she's trying to you know change that about herself and and so that's just what we have to look at is are we going to allow ourselves to look at all this that we're watching and bringing in and we're going to allow it to we're going to bring ourselves into what the world does or are we going to be like christ and be different be separate even though he got attacked even though he was he was hung on the cross even though he was considered uh, a criminal because of the way he acted he was a blasphemer he still remained faithful to his mission and his cause to who he was and it was hard it was very very hard um Midoriya same way Midoriya is given this one of the greatest powers in all that world and the one thing he had to change about himself was he could not always be the hero there's a quote that I love so much from Yu Hakusho which is if we're saving the world who's saving us and that's something that we're learning as well in Pastors University is having um intercessors who um when you're a pastor you need or a pastor or a leader you need a group of people who are there to keep you in check keep you in line um you know pray for you make sure that you're not doing all of this alone and i can tell you as a leader of a theater group that is very hard for me i have a bad bad time delegating uh responsibilities out to people cannot do it i have a i have a hard trust issue with people people are flawed <laughs> People don't get it. People like to take control. And sometimes you just need someone to just do. Those are hard to find. Uh, it's probably easier to find than what my brain tells me, but it's hard to find according to my brain. My wife uh, my wife was the one who directed behind the line. And there were times where we butted heads. Because I'm as a writer, I'm like, well, that's not what it was. Well, this is what I'm seeing in my head, and this is what we're going to do. Um, and it wasn't until a conversation a couple, I want to say about a week before the show opened, I was like, I'm like, you realize that what you're doing with the character, your thought about the character isn't right. She said, what do you mean? I said, well, this is what actually is happening. And it opened her eyes. Like, it didn't change the way things were being done, but it opened her eyes on what was being told what story was actually there and it was crazy how god put it together um through the writing and through the direction even though we saw two different things happening you know i wrote i wrote the script and my main character was my, my main character something happens to him at the beginning of the show and it's not revealed until the end of the show but <clears throat> the way serena took it was that event actually didn't happen yet it was just uh i could have and I was like, no, it did happen. It did happen. And this is God pulling him from that event and resetting it. Um, I don't want to spoil anything else, but um, it, it's interesting how God can work when you change your perspective. It's interesting, um, you know, when we stop looking at the world and we start, we stop looking at others. And even at times when we stop looking at our own perspective, our, our own understanding is some of the worst understanding in the world. And that, that's a lot where we're at today is we are in this mindset. And that, Romans 12, too, should say that, too. Don't copy the behavior and the customs of the world. Don't copy the behaviors of your past self because your past self 
might have been a good person, but they weren't a good person. Um, they had a lot of flaws that they wouldn't admit to. And um, and so it's just it's just interesting. We look at scripture, and then that was the whole point of this this podcast was to look at what what do we have in our world that is made from the world from from these ideas that God has planted in these people and they don't even think about it and they put it out there and we're like how does that relate to the Bible and here we go Izuku Midoriya he was a nobody then he took a leap of faith when when this higher power was like I want you I want you to carry out this legacy think about that that's what that's what God does man That is what he's currently doing. Every single time somebody is saved, God is putting his hand out like all might. I am choosing you to lead my legacy. I am choosing you to go out into the world and bring others home. Think like think about that. Like think about how powerful that is. We are called we are called his chosen every person who accepts Christ in their life who serves is God's chosen we're all God's children that's different but God's chosen are the ones who actively take that invitation who actively go out into the world and make a difference bringing more people back to the flock I know there's some people who don't like being you know compared to sheep or whatever <clears throat> But there's more people being brought back to God. We see it more and more every day. In fact, majority of the time when people don't believe, it's not because anything God did to them. It's what the world did to them. It's what the world did to them. The world hurts people all the time. People think because God made the world that it's God's fault these things happen and it's not true it's not true well God could intervene but if he did all the time that wouldn't give us free will we make our own actions we make our own choices God God has a road map <clears throat> God has a destiny for us but we don't have to choose that destiny and when we're born, we don't have to choose to be saved. We don't have to choose to do anything. But what we end up doing is we end up copying the behavior of the world that we see. And I'm not going to lie to you. And it's going to be very controversial. And someone's going to get mad. But that behavior also goes into churches. That behavior oversteps its bounds. You hear me? Because a lot of these churches out there are not of God anymore. We have people leading some of these churches who are some of the most judgmental people, but they will go around and do the same thing they just judged somebody for. I've said it before, I believe, on here. My wife <clears throat> grew up in a Baptist church. My wife had the opportunity through donations and scholarships to go out to LA to pursue the dream that she had this goal that she had that she felt God was leading her to and I still believe God is leading leading it to her in a different way but it was this opportunity granted to her and then the women in her church made her feel awful for accepting it well your mother's here and you guys are struggling how can you afford to go out there God provided a way that's not your job to say that that's not your job to be like well how can you afford to go out there your your job is to uplift the youth your job is uplift people that is our job we're not going to reach the world by being bible bashers we're not going to reach the world by watching these generational issues that keep happening not outside the church but in the church we're not, it, there's a reason why the church has started to fall it's because we're not allowing ourselves to move forward 
We're not allowing ourselves. I'm not saying we conform to the world. We don't do that. We, we should never do that. But we need to find a way to reach people as the world becomes more toxic. We have to reach more souls that are lost in that and we cannot be fire and brimstone it doesn't work it has proven that fire and brimstone does not work when we go out there and we bash people all the time and say well you're wrong and you're wrong and you're wrong no if you go back and you read paul's letters to these people he yeah he did say hey look y'all doing some stuff wrong but he always sends it with the most love he always sent it with the most love. Because if we want to look at it, if Paul was still going around and bashing people and judging people and just being awful to people, he would still be Saul. He would still be going around murdering people. But that's not him. That's not who Paul is. God picked him up, turned him around changed his name his job was to love people to spread the good news be like hey man y'all ain't going about this the right way but that's okay let's fix some things you don't know how that's okay that's okay I'm gonna tell you cause God has told me how to lead you in the right direction I get it. We are all, we all have been hurt by somebody or something in the past. I understand. But that one thing is not, is not God. God had his wrathful time. His main wrathful time. We're not there anymore. God has made promises since then. This went a little bit of a tangent, but I, I got to tell you the power of the spirit is coming out of me. And, and the thing is, when you accept, when you accept it, when you accept that gift and you change your mentality, you change your mindset, the way that you think things will happen. Doors will open. It may not get easier. It never says in the Bible things don't get easier. But what it says is be still and know that I'm God. Do not lean on your own understanding. Do not copy the behaviors and customs of the world. Don't do that. We need to allow the Holy Spirit, the one for all of our real world. We need to accept that and let it transform us. Let it allow us to become better people. Like I said, the power of the spirit. The power of the spirit. I'm just sitting here looking at the verse and I'm just like, when Paul said this, He had experienced this. This wasn't, just, this wasn't just him making stuff up. This wasn't him just going and, and 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 saying all this stuff. This was him who had he had already experienced this. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. It's so sad. So I got allergies. Um, it's sad. A lot of these videos I've been seeing lately of just these pastors going around and, and just trying to, you know, talk to people, answer questions for people, and, and the people just get so defensive. They get so offended. They get they. You tell one person, "Hey, man, like you probably shouldn't be drinking," and they just fly off the handles because you're a Christian. Because when you put that label on somebody, it becomes an attack, right? (laughs) 
we have to be greater than the world. We have to go beyond it. It saddened me the other day, yesterday actually, I was scrolling through YouTube shorts. And somehow, out of nowhere, this consecrator showed up. There was this woman. And she keeps on doing these, like, sexual jokes, these sexual, like, movements. And she keeps popping up on the shorts. I'm not even looking for her. She's there. So I eventually went to her page. I'm like, okay, what? How are you not canceled? How are you, how are you, how is YouTube not shut you down? And that's all her content is. Is just her being sexually hungry and trying to be a thirst trap for men, and it saddens the crap out of me. It saddens me so much that that's become a behavior that is constant. We're in 2023, and that's okay. But yeah, we've got other, you know, YouTubers like Corey Kenshin who are like getting, you know, age restriction bans for a video game. But yeah, you've got some lady on there who's actively being a thirst trap, actively doing, having sex jokes on her YouTube. And the algorithm is spitting it out. It's just crazy to me that that is where we're at. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world. And it saddens me that I feel like that's where we're headed again. Like we're, we're just going to keep having more and more people fall off the trap. And I, and I pray to God that it doesn't happen that way. That we have more Izuku Midorias who, who take the call who take, who take it, and they take that spirit, and they allow the spirit to work through them. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the ability to come together and, and hear this message. Lord, I just, I want to pray for those who, who might be lost who might be who might be suffering and they, and they stumbled across this video today because they they wanted to you know to see what the power of the spirit was and and even though we had a short amount of time i pray that that something hit them something threw flipped the switch something allowed them to realize that there is more to you than what the world wants to show oh, Jesus, i just i pray for that lady on youtube that you reach her somehow that you open her eyes or maybe you close them like you do with Paul maybe you blind her for a second and she's able to see your presence and that gets her on the right track Lord I, I pray for these people who are lost I pray for these people who who are ignorant to you those who think they know the word but they don't those who can can use scripture but honestly they don't understand what the scripture means lord i pray that you come into their lives whether it's through a person whether it's through some sort of medium like like a tv show or a book something that has been made that reflects your image lord whether it be something like my hero academia or some other anime Lord, I want to pray for those who are brokenhearted. Those who feel like they don't belong. Those who feel like they've been hurt by you, but in reality, they've been hurt by the world. You know, the enemy has the, the, the ability to convince us that when we're hurting, it's from God. That when we're hurting, it's from you, Lord Jesus. That you are the one that we need to blame for everything that it is that we're doing. But in fact, it is of the world. You don't create pain. You don't create anxiety. You don't create 
depression. You don't create anger. Those are feelings of the world. I just pray that anybody who is dealing with any of that, that they're just able to find you, able to reach out. I just pray that they're able to take hold of their own lives and realize I don't need that anymore. I'm not going to let it control me. I'm not going to let it take me down a different path. I am going to have new understanding. I am going to look at life from a different point of view, a different perspective. I want to see what God's will is for me. I'm tired of living in the world. I'm tired of living for the world. I'm tired of living for people. People who tell me that I'm wrong. People who tell me I'm this or that. I want God. I want to be that living sacrifice. I want to be that change for people, that light for people to bring them. And if that's you out there right now listening, I pray. No, I want you to pray this with me. Repeat after me. Father God, I know that I am weak. I know I cannot do this on my own. I cannot face this giant in front of me. But I believe that you sent your son to die for me. I believe that Jesus rose from the dead to carry the weight of my sin. And I believe that with the power of the Spirit, I can do anything. I can conquer anything because you're with me. Amen. Anyways, guys, that's all I got for you today. Just, just think about that. Have a good time. Have a good rest of your day. And uh, remember, to change your perspective, change the way you think.